All right. So we're going to start off on our respiratory system today, which will include, you know, mostly we're just talking about the getting air into the lung space. In general, we'll start off with one of those red dot moments where, you know, you don't have to take notes or anything as if you were. Um, but it, you always want to be reminded of the fact that the whole reason we're eating and breathing is because every single cell in your body needs oxygen and needs nutrients, right? It needs to get rid of that stuff. So if you're an amoeba sitting in a pond, you could do all that because you've got oxygen and nutrients out there. You're exchanging it through your cell membrane, right? Your whole body gets it because you're only one cell, right? Or if you're a very simple organism that the cells are kind of lining the environment and they're able to exchange gas <clears throat> or nutrients with the surrounding environment, right? You, those are very simple sort of systems that we're talking about here that could do that. But every cell deep, deep inside your body has to do the same thing. Every single cell in your body is like this, right? Every one of these cells need oxygen, every single, the deepest cells in your body. But we, right, our cells, not even our outside cells that are facing the environment with the air are getting oxygen like this, right? Just, well, they are ultimately, but they can't exchange it with the environment. Okay. So we have these big apparatuses, right, in your chest, right, your lungs. Basically, you have about 1,500 square feet of respiratory exchange membrane to get all that to exchange gases, right? So you've got to bring air in into these apparatuses, the lungs, right? and that where, and in that case, we can exchange oxygen with the environment, right? So for us, right, that whole respiratory exchange is happening in these little balls, these millions of little balls in your lungs, right, where air is going to be filled in this little sac, and then it's going to be associated tightly with all these capillaries that are going to exchange the gases, right, and then bring them to your tissue and bring the CO2 away from your tissues into this little sac right here. Right? So when you're talking about the lungs, everything we're going to be talking about, it's that gas exchange with the environment. But then right, coming up in the next couple of lectures, we talk about how we get those gas and nutrients <clears throat> exchanged like way, way deep inside your body, way deep. The cells inside your brain need oxygen. They need nutrients. They need to get rid of carbon dioxide. The deepest muscle cells inside the deepest parts of your intestines need all that right so we got to find a way to get the gas to them to take away the you're probably familiar with a lot of these diseases right here like bronchitis pneumonia bronchitis and so at the end of this you should be able to kind of identify why these why pneumonia what pneumonia does as far as gas exchange what bronchitis does what bronchitis does where it's occurring and all that right so the other thing is terminology, terminology wise speaking, when we're talking about that breathing, right? Breathing air, bring it, breathing in, breathing out, that's ventilation. So just real quick before we start, this may be out of sequence with your slides. Um, but when you're talking about breathing, right? This you'll get into a whole bunch of in physiology about the whole, whole way that you create a pressure gradient by the actions of your muscles, right? And for us, we just want to know a couple of things, right? The fact that your diaphragm contracts, the fact that your external intercostals contract, these increase the size of your thoracic cavity, right? When, you, when those muscles relax, <clears throat> uh, your lung volume is decreased, Right? So for the mechanics of all this, and this is quiet breathing, this is when your stomach, you know, your ab muscles aren't involved. This is just normal, everyday breathing. And the whole idea is your diaphragm and, interco and external intercostals increase by their contraction. They're increasing the volume of your rib cage, right? I mean, of your thoracic cavity, which is going to make air you know, get sucked into that whole uh, 
area of decreased pressure. All right, and so again, you'll you'll see all this stuff in uh, physio, but there it is. There's it for us. And then the other thing about that whole general um, respiration, normal respiration, when you breathe in, that's an active, a very active process, right, of contracting it. After that, it's a little bit of a relaxation thing. You don't have to expend a lot of energy when you're exhaling usually, unless you're doing like deep breathing stuff or unless some of your normal mechanisms for deflation are, are defective, right? And so you got all these elastic fibers, not only around the little air sacs, right, that are gonna expand like a balloon and store energy, right? And then when you breathe out and relax, that's gonna be pushed out right there, right? You also have elastic fibers and everything in your muscles. So there's a lot of elastic processes going on that makes breathing out a more or less passive process, right? Unless those things are defective, right? And especially when you get old, these elastic fiber breakdown are gonna make breathing more labored. You know, you'll see old people kind of like having to breathe out like that, forced breathing. Uh, with things other than these natural uh, processes right there, all right? So when we're talking about the functions of the respiratory system, the main whole idea here is that we are getting gas right into this, uh, into these little uh, respiratory exchange membrane areas right here called the alveoli. Right, such that gas is in this little space right here, and it is exchanging the oxygen with and carbon dioxide with the bloodstream right here. Right, that's the whole purpose. Everything else is just meant to facilitate this and make it better. Right. So when we're talking about the rest of the bulk of at least physically speaking, right, the mass of the air, we're going to have air coming in through your nose or in some cases, some people more likely than others, you're gonna have breathing in through the mouth, right? Getting air down into these areas right there, right? So we talk a little bit about this because some things are happening along the way there that are important, right? So we want just oxygen, but there's other stuff in the air, little tiny particles that we breathe in that we don't want in our air spaces, we don't want in our body, right? So we have to have ways of dealing with those as well, right? So the other parts of it is, you know, your gas exchange, everything's centered around this conduction of those gases to and from those respiratory surfaces. And along the way, we're gonna to wanna to condition the air <clears throat> um, by making it, warming it, uh, warming it, humidifying it, and then filtering it, right? So you're gonna to wanna to condition it, and that's what we mean by conditioning it. And so there's also mechanisms to defend us against airborne pathogens. Also, completely, independent of these, or not really independent, but along the way, there's sound production and olfactory sense, right? Because sound waves, uh, vibrations going up through your trachea and everything are, are going to allow us to produce sound, and all the air has all those chemical odorants in them that our nose will be able to pick up. So those are two things that are happening along the way. All right, so as we move, right, from air, going into your nasal cavity, like through the vestibule, through the nasal cavity, down into your trachea, into your bronchi, you wanna ask yourself at each point, like what is the surface of the lining, histologically speaking, what are the big structures along the way that we encounter along the way? All those things that are involved in the fact that we share part of our whole respiratory tract with the digestive tract, Right? And then what are these structures that allow inhalation, right? So these are some of your learning objectives. So these structures up here, just completely physically, anatomically speaking, we're talking about the upper respiratory tract, your nasal cavity, your pharynx, and then the lower respiratory tract, right? Which for the bulk of it's gonna be your trachea and your bronchi, and then all your alveoli. So when we're talking about these zones, these functional zones of the respiratory system, 
these two conductive and respiratory system right here. Right? We're going to be talking about the conductive zone that is getting air right, all the way down to these little these little last areas. So the bulk of it, again, physically what takes up uh, this overall, I guess, in superior to inferior right, is going to be this conductive zone. Right? And then the respiratory zone exchange is going to be within, the bulk of it's going to be within that alveoli right there, gas exchange. You're also going to have uh, defensive mechanisms down there, little macrophages, as well as ways we won't really talk about regulating uh, various blood properties through here, but that's, that is another function. All right, so for these zones, right, we'll just kind of go over all these features real briefly. We're talking about the conductive zones. You're going to start with an air uh, particle going through your nose, and that's really how you're going to want to think of these. Um, it, you're going to follow like a, a couple of molecules of air. What happens as they go uh, into your vestibule right here? What is the tissue they encounter in your vestibule? Is it different from when they get into your nasal cavity right here? Right? What's the difference between out here and out here? Right? From the nasal cavity, you're going to go into the pharynx and the larynx right here. Right? So these areas are important because this area right here, again, we encountered this last time, right? When some of it is shared with your digestive tract, right? And so there's mechanisms here that we have to deal with that fact. From the larynx, we're gonna go into the windpipe, right? that solid sort of pipe going down into your lungs, the trachea. From there, it's gonna branch off into your bronchi. From the bronchi, it's gonna branch off into multiple uh, branches until we get finally to the terminal bronchioles right there. Right. So the terminal bronchioles right here is going to lead into your respiratory zone. And at that point, and only that point up to this, the air molecules, all the air, oxygen, whatever, has just been traveling down. You have not gotten any of that air into your body yet, right? into your bloodstream. So here at the respiratory bronchioles, you get a little bit of air exchange but they lead into your alveolar ducts, which lead into your alveolar sacs, which is going to lead into these, each little alveoli here, right? Each individual ball right there, right? And so here is where the actual gas exchange is going to be coming in. Blood oxygen is coming in, going into the blood. Carbon dioxide is going to leave the blood, going to these alveoli. This right here, the air is going in, right? going down here through this shared respiratory tract. And I guess, yeah, right around here, right where the epiglottis is. Can you guys see that? Right, and it's gonna like kind of pass through that big hole right there. But you can also see, no, you can't, Never mind. Uh, you should, you would also be able to see, it was a good model, right? The fact that it's right, can you guys see that? Right, the trachea is over here. If the air is going down here, the esophagus is going to be behind it at that point, right? And you can kind of make it. Along the way, again, what I, what I just mentioned before was you should be able to kind of trace the path of a molecule from the nose to the bloodstream, right? Everything that's going on through here, all of these, we just, I just usually refer, refer to these as regions of the organ. Your trachea is a, technically an organ, right? The bronchi, but I'm not really too worried about that, just what I, you know, it's more important that we're looking at what's going on in each region, what are the main structures that might be seen along the way that are important, right? What is the histology of any given region, like whether it's lined by this pseudo-stratified ciliated columnar epithelia, right, or stratified squamous. Why is it stratified squamous here? The two most important ones really Functionally, as far as the airway is concerned, is this pseudostratified columnar and the simple squamous alveoli, right? So as we go, we'll go along there, just make sure you understand where that is and why that is. Just to sort of, we'll be talking about a lot about here, right? The pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial, so much that you could just refer to as PSCC at this point, right? And this is what is referred to as respiratory epithelium. And this is what, the tissue you're going to encounter uh, 
at a, to a certain point in your respiratory tract when it's only air, right? So your nasal cavity, right, in any area below uh, where you're not in a shared digestive tract, uh, all the way down until you get to your respiratory exchange surface around there, or a little bit before there. It changes to something else. But the whole purpose of this is like a shag rug, except that shag rug is covered in mucus, if you like imagery right there, right? So these are lined by these goblet cells are secreting a lot of mucus that are on the top right here. Cilia, right now we've moved into the actual function of what cilia is doing versus microvilli, which microvilli, I remember, was just to increase the surface area. This is a shag rug that moves, right? It moves and it um, pushes debris that's caught in that layer of mucus, right, up and out of, the, out of your respiratory tract away from the respiratory exchange surface, right? It also, because it's mucus and it is close to the bloodstream because it's a thin layer, is also gonna warm the air as it moves down there, right? So this is all part of the conductive zone. And this, we'll see this over and over again. So this is the functions, right? Your cilia, your cilia is moving things along and that mucus is helping trapping stuff in there. Along the way, it's going to humidify and filter the air.